1998 Porsche Boxster 986 um, adding the rear parcel shelf speaker box uh, I bought the box on eBay it was beige my interior is gray and what do you do it was a hundred bucks it was uh, a good deal these doors were stuck and I just freed them up and yay no problem uh, anyway um, this one didn't come with the speakers uh, I'm not going to order the, you know, I think it's like three or four hundred bucks for the, just for the parts to put the speaker grill in for the little um, tray to hold the speakers and then you have to get double speakers in there, whatever, you don't have much choice in the speakers you put in. So I took the original door that was on there, the little uh, cubby section, and just covered it in outdoor speaker cloth. I recovered this in, in, uh, gray speaker fabric this that looks nasty right now doesn't matter because the little plug goes down it's like a big plug and covers in the screw on the engine cover but it you know I just covered traced the original pattern and glued it on worked fine um, so anyway we're going to be mounting the original speaker so I'll show you the this just pops out right now because I haven't attached it permanently in here just the original door that was on there because these were just like little shelves and covered in speaker cloth glued on it just pops into there and it's doesn't have a problem going in like I've heard a lot of the original uh, people saying that the kit that you've got to adapt the little speaker grills and everything why are you gonna pay $400 when you got to adapt stuff anyway so anyway this is gonna go in there and then I'm going to here's the other speaker box or the other the other side with it mounted on the box the shelf that was originally in there that's the glue that was holding the little carpet down there and I'm just going to simply make an MDF uh, back and put the speaker which I'm using that's from a um, the Sony soundbar I think uh, I'll show you the speaker uh, sorry my garage is a mess constant state of projectness it's just a Two by four or two by five speaker from a Sony uh, soundbar for a television set, um, and it'll oh, wrong box. Where's the other box? Where did I put it? I have no idea. Oh, there it is. I'll just mount it in the back on MDF. I'm just gonna cut an MDF panel, mount the speaker to it, wire it. It goes right to the stereo. Um, with this option, I think it's the 490 option. I have the door speakers, the optional door speakers, and the door speakers and the dash speakers run off of the amp, and the rear speakers originally run off the stereo, so I'm just gonna run them to the stereo. And here's the other speaker box. I'm simply gonna place it on the MDF. Because there's a slight curve on the bottom, I'm just gonna trace this side out. Uh, glue and screw it in from the bottom make a hole in the bottom for the speaker wires and run the wires <laughs> and then just screw the uh, the speaker to the MDF obviously cut a hole in the MDF for the speaker to pop through and I'll show you when I'm done I will uh, well I'll show you a couple of steps along the way but it's probably not even worth watching it's some pretty easy stuff so uh, I'll get those cut out and we'll be back in a little bit Okay, I didn't really show how to get the old parts out. I did it in the winter time when I ordered this. Um, you can see this little glue remnant here. These sit in with a bunch of T25 Torx screws, uh, three T25 Torx screws, and um, the fronts are kind of glued along this edge with a really it's really brittle glue. You can just kind of grab a utility knife and score it and cut it and pop it out. Um, when I go to put this back in, I'll be putting it in in one piece once the insert is in here. I'll just be jamming it, in, not jamming, <laughs> putting it in. This is the wrong side, isn't it? Yes, it is. But whatever. I'll be putting it in and uh, I'll show you when I get there. But um, I had to make the inserts 
MDF was way too wimpy. I made the inserts out of um, half inch pine and just painted them black because they're going to be slightly visible through the um, through the speaker grills, the, the speaker mesh fabric. Um, do not ask me where the speaker to get outdoor speaker mesh fabric. I'm sure you can Google it. Uh, these, the fabric on these just was on some old outdoor speakers that I had. Um, they're like 15 years old and uh, I just pulled the grills off them and cut the mesh out and glued them on to the front of here. And if it ever wears out, I can just pop it out and replace it with uh, with different fabric. Um, anyway, I gotta quit for the night because I got some crap to do and I'm not gonna be able to finish this tonight now, which really sucks, but I gotta let the paint dry on those uh, pine inserts and uh, we'll continue this oh, in about two days. Okay, we're back a few days later to the speakers in the Boxster. Uh, these little mounts, the wooden mounts I made up, um, the speakers mounted them, screwed to them. They have to be glued in and screwed to the uh, the original boxes inside, which I'll show later. It's just got painted uh, and are drying simply because the speaker grill fabric you can kind of see through it, so make everything black so it doesn't look crappy under there. You'll notice the little centers are pushed in. Like on any speaker, that is not a big deal. That's a dust cap. It doesn't do anything for sound, and these won't be visible, so I don't care. Um, so the wiring is going to be accessible through the back. You're going to need probably 11 feet of wiring for each side. Um, 11 feet of, you know, speaker wire, two terminal, positive, negative, for each side to run to the front. So right now I've got the engine in the service position, um, the roof in the service position, so I can get the engine up. A million videos on the internet on how to do that. And what I have to do is this car originally came with a bag hook. <laughs> you don't ever want to hook your bag, trust me. Um, and this is it mounted on the roll bar here, so that's the speaker box won't fit past that, so this simply pops out. Or it's supposed to. <laughs> there we go. Two little push pins. And, oh, that's riveted on. Okay, so I'm going to have to drill those rivets out just with a drill. Um, drill the rivets and this little thingy and pop those up. Well, you know, it really is that bag hook that dirty and at the same time I've taken the opportunity to clean my engine so I pulled the engine cover off and just sprayed it off with um, foaming tire cleaner and you'll see that in a few minutes it was pretty filthy and that's just cleaning and conditioning the plastic and rubber under there with the tire cleaner so I'll, uh, I'll be back in a few minutes okay so the bag hooks are now riveted the, the rivets are drilled off and now that won't interfere with the I can't believe my hand is so damn dirty just from pulling this thing off I don't know where all that dirt came from so anyway uh, back in a few minutes to uh, continue on with this I just have some more stuff to take apart that I will show you okay so I've got the this is the the, the, the passenger side speaker done uh, cover put back to the box attached back to the box the speaker mount and speaker inside wire soldered, drill the hole in the bottom to run it back out, and then I'll just be able to push it back in in one piece, and it'll screw back into the original mounting holes. This will pop down until the original molded piece that popped in this slot slots itself in. Which is going to be a bit of a pain, but not too bad. There. It'll go. I've tried it. <laughs> it will fit. There's just let me show you this. Because the speaker cloth is a little thicker, there's these two little tabs that it's got to, the, the sides have to slide down into. And uh, there's just a little bit of a little bit of glue left there. 
So you don't need to glue the front speaker grill in. This will hold it. This whole box will hold it forward and pushed in. So let's just push that sucker in. And then there's a little lip along here that goes in a little slot at the front. That's again a tiny bit difficult to get in there, but I've already done it a couple of times to make sure I can do it this way. And apparently I can. In. I'm just going to keep fiddling with that. No sense you watching me for 10 minutes fiddle with that, but it will pop in there. And we're just about done other than wiring to the stairs. Okay, so this is what the speakers look like covered in their grill cloth and mounted inside with the wiring ready to go and just run the wiring back <coughs> to the passenger side. So it's going to go under the passenger side, down under, and um, yeah, toward the front to the stereo. Um, I put electrical connectors on here. I am not running a 12 foot single wire. So if I ever have to pull this out, I have to unwire the whole thing all the way with dashboard. That would be silly. So I put plug-in spade connectors on this side. Um, I only had one color speaker wire, so I'm gonna have to make sure I mark that left and right so I know which one's which. Um, again, in the service position. So I've got the bag hook taken out and now I've just got the four little uh, screw pieces that hold the top carpet play cover in place and in order to do this if you've put got the uh, The speaker box two of them you need to go replace Two of them or get if you didn't if it didn't come with your used speaker box or whatever You have to get two of these long ones the original ones are the short ones That is the Porsche part number Right there, this is from the Porsche dealership. I think these were like ten dollars each or something. They weren't expensive. There's the part number. And eight six five five one four two nine zero 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 one C. And you need two of these. And they come with a little um, washer. So I'm just gonna I'll set this camera up and see if I can work around it and put the damn thing in. Um, I'm not going to, due to time constraints and crap that I've got to do, I'm not going to be able to wire it tonight, but I am going to put this box back in. There's not a lot of room to put this thing in. under there. <laughs> so I'm just going to match these to the big front ones on the box and screw them in. The two rear ones will remain the same. The two little ones on the rear will remain the same. And I've just got to leave that wire hanging until another day.
Well, this isn't easy to match up to where the, uh, the original holes are. It's kind of a pain. But anyway, from the front, this is what it looks like. Uh, that's the old clips, I'm gonna, which, are, which I'm going to be using too, to secure the back in. And I just have to match these up from the top and uh, go down and, and hook on to the to these two pins right there. To go down and turn on just like the old ones, but just matching them up. Um, I don't know, I don't know if there's a longer peg. Is there a longer post? This post down here, is it longer with the... Yeah, I hope not. Because <laughs> I don't have that. Um, but anyway, I'll, uh, I'll jam this on and let you know if, uh, if that longer post is required. I don't think it is. It shouldn't be. But uh, we'll find out in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so here it is. It is installed and did, uh, did work going in. I've got the four wires here, which will be run under this side cover we're removing this side cover the side panel there and going up to the stereo which again due to other junk I had to do today and had to stop this for like three hours I can't finish today but uh, these two long pins that's all you need they, they go on to the original pins it just took a little bit of pushing because it wasn't used to uh, going down that far just pushes in and turns quarter turn and locks just like the original but uh, I guess the fabric that I'd put on top of the uh, speaker box was a little uh, stiff. Once it got pushed down hard enough, it locked on okay enough. So that's it for now. Uh, we'll finish wiring this hopefully tomorrow. I'll have a chance to wire this and I'll have a couple of extra of these. Because um, you'll have the two left over that were on the front originally. and. That's about it. I'm going to put all this back together and uh, we will wire the sucker up tomorrow, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Thanks for watching. Okay, something I noticed with the uh, speaker box installed. When I used to, uh, whenever I put my top down, I always relatched the latch up here. Hold it like this and relatched it. Can't do that. When you have the speaker box installed, you should, I guess you have to leave the Learn something new every day. Anyway, I'm back tomorrow with wiring. Okay, so this part of the installation is going to be assuming that you have the stock CDR220 deck in your car. Um, you should grab the push removal uh, keys for removing the stereo. I don't have them, but there is a way to get them out. Um, simply pop the two side panels on the side off. This, the, the one with the, the roof switches, they just pull, simply pull out and then there's going to be four bolts, or sorry, screws. I think they're T25. They are. God, T25, I think. <laughs> I think that's the one I used. Was it a 25? Yeah. I'm not sure. The size. No, it was this one. And of course, these ones are not labeled the number on them. Why aren't they? No number. 
I think they're T25s or T20s. Um, anyway, there's one, one, two, three, four screws, and you can slide the whole thing out, unplug the deck, and then from underneath you'll flip it over the whole dash panel that you've pulled out. And you can come in from the back with something flat and depress these two blue pins and it will slide out. There's one on each side of the deck and it will slide out. Now the spot I'm going to be using to get the rear speakers from, mine's a 98, um, I think up to 99 or 2000, uh, this will be the same, uh, assuming you have the door speakers. If you have the door speakers, then you have an amp up front that runs the door speakers and the front speakers. If you don't have an, if you don't have the door speakers, you've got the uh, basic stereo, which will run off of here. But either way, this is the plug you're going to need. The middle one, which is brown, you can get this off any old Volkswagen or Audi. Just take a picture of the back of your deck and go to the wrecking yard and cut one of these off. They gave it to me for free. And they're divided into colored pairs, uh, blue and blue and brown, I believe our front and green and green and brown are rear. One of the two. Um, I'll I have to look up the wiring diagram which is on top of here. Uh, on top of the deck. That's for the rear speakers, rear, left and right. And if your stock stereo uh, is just the basic version, then it will also have front, left and right off of here. If you have the door speakers, they will be, there will be no plug. It will be run off the amplifier in this plug down here, the black plug everything runs out off the amplifier but you will still need to connect the rear speakers to the deck if you've got some ver other version or an aftermarket deck um, haven't done one I don't have that uh, information for you this is for a stock um, the 490 radio version which is um, the 4 channel amp that powers the front and door speakers and the rears will be powered off of this so anyway, I'm going to, you know, it's just a matter of running a wire from the dashboard back to the box, which is installed now, um, hooking it together and uh, checking it out. But first, I'm going to hook all this back up and make sure this wiring actually works. Uh, it should, but we'll see. Nothing ever can be taken for granted when working on a car, most of the time. By the way, the connectors here for the, um, the convertible roof and the rear defroster and the lock are all exactly the same except for the three different colors but on the switches those colors are marked see pink green yellow so you can't get them confused but they're exactly the same switch the exact same uh, connector 100 percent the same so you could mix them up but look at the color code on the switches and you'll be fine sorry i had a bit of a brain fart there just looking at the the little wiring diagram on the top of the stereo and I noticed that the yellow um, the yellow is the one this one here I guess yes this one here it would be up there there's three little pieces that can connect together if you have this is the one that I got out of a, an Audi and it has the same connectors but they all join together for I guess this would be if you have the six channel um, uh, probably I think it came in the 996 so if you had rear speakers in a six channel amplifier these other um, plugs would be utilized but this again is cut out of a Volkswagen Passat I think it was or was it an Audi it was a Passat um, anyway so that is would be the amp and speaker control the black one on the bottom right here that's the controls for it. it's the speed dependent volume control blah 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 uh, mute during telephone calls but whatever that's what the black plug is now so I've got the brown plug plugged in and I'm just going to test to make sure these speaker outputs actually work and I have to turn the car on and re-enter my radio code back in a bit okay I just tested the rear with this little speaker that was sitting in the garage don't even know what the hell it came from <laughs> I simply hooked up the uh, positive and negative to these two uh, the two speaker wires uh, on for each side left and right they do work so I'm going to move on with hooking up the wiring to go under the dash into the back speakers
Okay, so last night when I was putting the speaker box in, this is where the left and right speaker box, speaker wiring ended up. Um, hate to say it, I don't remember which one's left and right, so I'm gonna have to test that with the stereo. I honestly don't. I'm not pulling the M thing out to test it. Uh, I have to put up the top and everything. I'm much too lazy. So now we have to remove this side panel and the door sill. Side panel, simply a screw right about there. Phillips head screw comes out. Side panel, pull up a little rubber. Uh, this could be the door panel. Um, if you're on a right hand drive, this could be your uh, control for the, uh, the, the front and rear trunk, which removes almost exactly the same. This is a T, I think this is a 15, um, it might be a 20, 25, I don't know, it's not marked on this. I don't know why this thing doesn't have a damn number marked on it. Like, really? Whatever. <laughs> this is like a Harbor Freight uh, torque set that I got, I don't know, like a year ago for like five bucks. There's like ten screwdrivers in there, so... I guess I can't complain about not having numbers marked on them. It just simply pulls straight up and out. <laughs> and we're going to pop this cover off. Oh wait, there is one more screw. I don't need to worry about that screw because I'm just going to run the wire down underneath the carpet. So I'm just going to loosen this enough with my hand to run the wiring down under there, under here, along, under the dash where there's two screws, I believe. Pulling the lower dash panel under there and there. If I remember correctly. <laughs> One, two. I'll show you them in two minutes. I want to find those two screws that just popped up when I pulled up that cell piece, or I'll never find them. Okay, under the passenger side footwell, there was this little black plastic screwy <laughs> uh flathead. Anyway, unscrewed that, pulled it down, and you don't have to remove the back one, which is right there. You don't need to remove it because you now have pure access straight through. You can see through to the other side, to the driver's side footwell. And we just run the wiring back up to the, uh, behind to the stereo. Make sure you don't, right here, you can see some little green levers. Those are for the HVAC controls to uh, uh, to, to move the, the flap doors and stuff, as is that pink one straight back. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a pink one straight back in there. Let me put some light on that. You don't want the wires running into those. See the pink one and the green ones. Green ones to the left, pink ones straight ahead. See those levers? You don't want wiring running into those. So, secure it up to the heater blower up here somewhere. I'm sure there's something to secure it to. Zip tie it, tape it up, whatever. Uh, you'll find your own method and then run the wires back up in behind into here. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that? No, I'm going to do that. Okay, I found it super easy to take the two wires, twist them together, and just push down where the wire loom is there, and straight down in behind the glove box. Uh, it popped out in like 30, not even 30 seconds, and now I can just pull this through, weave it under the, uh, weave it under the dash pad here, under the carpet, and back to the speakers, and that will be... However you figure out how to do it, uh, everyone's going to try and do it differently, but I'll show what I do when I'm done it. Okay, I found on the side piece, I realized I did not want the wires to interfere with the seatbelt retractor, which I knew was just under here. So, actually, without taking out this 10 millimeter bolt, which is a pain back here, as long as you got that one bolt in, you can lift up on this side piece. It will disengage from the bottom, and a clip on the side, you just have to make sure you line those up push down when you put it back in then put the screw in and then I could zip tie the wires around the roll bar so it wouldn't interfere right here with the seat belt retractor and now run it under the carpet and up to the front 
Okay, so everything's mostly back together, other than I wanted to show you the wiring under the dash, which is just simply a couple of... Uh, of course, you probably can't see that. The flashlight again. Uh, they're just double-sided foam tape zip-tie mounts that I used on the side of the airbox. The heater airbox. And uh, ran the wires on them. But everything's hooked up, ready to go. Wires were all cleaned up underneath, taped back together. Dash bezels back on. And all I have to do is plug these, uh, the lighter, the roof, and blah, 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 back in. Clip that on, slide, uh, plug the radio in, slide it in. Just be careful when you're sliding the radio in. There's that metal sleeve that it goes into. Make sure the wires are out of the way. You don't want to pinch them in that metal sleeve because it'll just sever them and it won't be fun. So make sure your wires are all out of the way. The HVAC wires and everything else, just kind of tuck those up under the way. Screw the dash hole or the hole for the radio before you're... Uh, before you're done and uh, that's about it I'm just gonna zip everything up and test this out again it should work be fine because it worked fine just before I put everything back together okay I had to <laughs> turn the damn car on and turn the air conditioning on because it's like a hundred degrees here today uh, everything works fine um, one thing to remember when you're putting the stereo back in getting those wires past that back bracket that's like a clip like this on either side that the stereo shoves into keeping the wires clear of that is a pain in the butt um, I left this side of the blank switches on mine they, for other stuff on yours maybe uh, but on mine these this is just a blank panel I left this off and uh, just as the stereo was going in I could use a, a paint stir stick or you use a screwdriver, whatever, to, to coax the wires past the little um, the little metal clip and did it on both sides, and that seemed to ease it in there a lot easier. So anyway, everything said and done. All I got to do is put those two, uh, hook these things back up, clip them on, 30 seconds, and done. Um, you know, hopefully you like, dislike, leave your comments down below. Uh, thank you very much for watching and enduring through this because I know. Um, it was a long one. Thanks. Uh, I guess a silly thing that I <laughs> kind of omitted is, what the hell does it sound like? Um, well, this camera is not stereo for one thing, and if you can't tell the difference in, in stereo quality or speaker quality on a camera phone uh, or camera microphone. It rarely, unless it's like some high dollar stuff. So I will just say it fills in the sound stage much better. It doesn't sound like I'm listening to the music coming from the bumper. Uh, it surrounds you. Uh, it actually makes everything much more clear uh, and easier to hear. It's, it's just a much crisper, cleaner sound from everything without changing any of the front speakers. Everything seems to work better just with it. Uh, I've got it biased to, oddly enough, um, fader is at 5 to the rear. Um, seems to be where it sounds the best, where the front isn't overpowering it, but there's plenty of, even with it biased that part to the back, um, it does sound absolutely fine. Um, yeah, that's all I can say is it's, it, it honestly, for, for what I paid for everything altogether, I think it cost me $160, including the, uh, uh, the rear parcel shelf thingy that I am making everything and most of the stuff I had sitting around the garage anyway so uh, you don't have to go out and spend six or seven hundred bucks on all this crap and and uh, the, in order to get it in there just figure it out it's more fun to work it out on your own anyway thank you very much for